Okay, so welcome to this tutorial. Today we're focusing on the Metasploit console and we're covering core tools. So first thing we need to do is go and get logged in and load up our Metasploit console. And remember that's NSF console, all one word. NSF. So some of the basic commands are kind of important because we need to know how to navigate back and forth uh, in our Metasploit. So one of the first things that I thought was kind of interesting was this back command. So when we've worked with a particular module and we need to go back to Metasploit, instead of having to go exit, what can we do? So let's go ahead and we're going to go in and we're going to set up a exploit so let's use dos oh, use dos slash windows and we're going to use this first exploit and uh you'll notice that we're actually in the auxiliary portion where that exploit's at Let's assume we're done with it. That is where we would use back. Okay, it'll take us out of our exploit back to MSF. Next is gonna be banner. Banner is a pretty simple one. We just hit banner and you will see that it will keep changing our banner. Another command is check. However, there aren't a lot of exploits that support it. So we also just have options. Yeah, so with check, you have to check some, you have to do some information before check will actually work. Uh, it's saying invalidated uh, our host. I've actually tried doing a uh, check on this one before and check doesn't actually function. So let's go ahead and go back. What about color? Color allows us to change the color of our outputs. Another command is this connect. And if you give it a IP address, oh, I hope my member lock is on, and a port number. it should allow us to try to connect. Sometimes it likes the colon, sometimes it likes the space. And that happened to be that my host is not allowing this, but it's very similar to Telnet. Another command is edit, and edit will allow us to edit a module, but first we have to select an appropriate module. So here I loaded up an earlier module and I have the ability to go ahead and edit it. And I don't want to edit it, so let's go ahead and back out of it. Now remember, this is VIM, them, so we can actually do escape, colon, P, exclamation mark. All right, it did not like the exclamation mark. How about just Q? Q lets us go and exit. Let's go back so that we can go back to our console and let's go on to the next command. Another common one is exit. So let's go ahead and get back into my exploit. Exit will actually exit completely out of Metasploit console. Okay, now that we're back in our Metasploit, let's go ahead and go to the next command, which is help. Help will give us a list of commands. Okay, so after that, we have info. And info gives us additional information. But you'll notice that 
without an active module, it won't give us anything. So let's go ahead and load another module. And let's type info. And there we'll get info about the individual module. Very similar to show options, but different uh, information is displayed. So let's go ahead and back out of that. Now we have a command IRB. IRB will drop us into a live Ruby interpreter shell. I don't actually want to go all the way in, so I'm just going to go ahead and kill it. Next, we have jobs. So, job doesn't work. Gotta make sure we add the s, so jobs. And there are no active jobs. We're gonna do I have an H to show all the uh, banner information for it. But jobs are modules that are running in the background that provide the ability to list and terminate uh, individual jobs. So let's go ahead and let's load back our original exploit. Now we have a command kill. And kill should... Oh, It should kill our appropriate job. You do have to supply the appropriate job ID though. Next, we have our load. And a load will allow us to load specific plugins. So for example, we could load our PCAP log. So it'd be load and the appropriate plugin. We have the option to load a path. And that's invalid because you have to give it the load path space, the path to the new uh, module that you're including. So this is really good if you are creating your own zero day or if you're creating your own exploit, you have to have a way to load it. And then there's also the unload option as well, because if we have the ability to load our modules, we need to be able to unload them as well. So you know what, let's go ahead and unload our PCAP log file. And we should be able to unload it. We have the ability to resource just like in our Metinterpreter shell, resource is still available. I'm not covering that because I've already covered it for the Metatripiter shell. Next we have the route command. We could actually see how traffic is being routed. So let's go ahead and do route print. Our goal should be able to see the appropriate router information. Let's see if we can get the route information for our server. So route get, I'm gonna give it the IP address of our target server and it's gonna route through a local host. Next is our search function. We can search for exploits. So search user map script. And uh, if our module database is not cached, we may get warning messages, but we could be searching our uh, different types of modules so we can see what we have. Also, see what rank they are. An interesting thing here is we can actually combine our searching with other subcommands. So we want to look for an exploit and we want to have the platform windows. Oh, I hope if I spell search correctly. And again, our database is not cached, so it should be running a little slower, but that way it will look for exploits that are made for windows. And you can see we have a long list of them. 
And that's one of the problems with uh, Metasploit is you have to be able to use search because there are so many exploits that are here and trying to find the one that you want is not always easy. With that, we could also search by name, MySQL. Or by path, search. So our search has lots of functionality. We can search specifically by platform. We can search specifically for types as well. So we have lots of options. All right, lastly, let's search by author. Let's look for one for by Dookie. We have sessions. We don't have any active sessions, but sessions would allow us to bounce around between what sessions we did have. Hyphen H shows us up our options. Let's talk about our set and unset. So let's go ahead and get into a uh, exploit. Let's look at our show options. So here we have a remote host. So we use set is set settings. So set our host. So set should set it. What about unset? Unset should remove those options. So you'll see that we set it up here and we unset it down here. We also have the ability to look at the encoders that are encoding it. So, oh, encoder. I have to make sure you type the correct command, encoders. These are all the optional encoders. Just like set, we have the ability to globally set commands. So set G. Set G will allow us to do it globally. So set G, our host, our Kali machine. Oh, let's try it again with the right address. So now if we do set G, we should see there are certain values that are pre-defined for us. So just like set and unset, I want to go ahead and unset my host. Next, we have the save option. And from there, we can save configuration files. Now let's go and do a show command. And you'll see that we have lots of things in our show command because this should display all the modules in Metasploit. Here we're just looking at encoders and NOPs and exploits. And if we keep scrolling, we get more and more information. I'm just going to keep scrolling and scrolling and scrolling because this is going to list everything inside. We have payloads. We have everything inside Metasploit. Uh, you just spend time scrolling and scrolling and scrolling. And a problem is, if we're looking for things, that is not 
gonna work well. So with our show, we can do specifics, like show auxiliary, or show exploits, or show any combination of things. So like if we want to look at exploits, show exploits, same option for show payloads. We get to all the appropriate payloads. We have the option to show NOPS. And the last command is going to be use. So we, before we were setting a certain exploits, and here we have the option to actually use a specific exploit. And use should set that exploit to be used. And that's actually a brief overview of all of the Metasploit commands that should basically uh, be used. Thank you.